this practical activity will be familiar to many people. A piece of pondweed, an aquatic plant, is turned upside down in some sodium hydrogen carbonate solution and placed next to a bright light. As the pondweed photosynthesizes, the gases produced are released from the end of the stem as bubbles. In the setup here, a funnel and test tube are being used to collect the gas that has been produced. In this video, we're going to cover different pondweeds and setups that can be used for this practical. But most importantly, we're going to provide you with some top tips for making sure that this practical runs as smoothly and reliably as possible. We'll also talk a little bit about why pondweed has this characteristic and how you might explain this somewhat counterintuitive photosynthesis practical to your students. There are loads of pondweeds available that you can use for this practical. Previously, Cabomba caroliniana was suggested, but it's now unavailable. To help you prepare for this activity, we have a range of pondweeds here, all of which you can see are producing bubbles. Today, we're using the following species. Elodia, or Egeria densa. Egeria najas. Ceratophyllum demersum, or hornwort. And Myriophyllum scabratum. There are two other Cabomba species that you can buy, but these species are much harder to care for. These are Cabomba piaihiensis, or Focata, or Red Cabomba, and Cabomba aquatica, which is sometimes called Yellow Cabomba. The hornwort is hardier as it's a UK native, but it can be very woody in the winter months, which means it can bubble less readily. If you're using pondweed collected from an outdoor pond, do consider that during the darker and colder months, it will not be photosynthesizing at a particularly fast rate. It's a good idea to get this weed out of the pond at least a couple of weeks before the practical is planned to take place and illuminate it with a bright light in an aerated tank to allow the photosynthetic machinery to become active again. If you're keeping any pondweed in a tank for longer than a couple of days, you may want to purchase a very bright light with a rating of over 2,500 lumens, such as an LED work lamp, to ensure it stays healthy. These work lamps can be bought from hardware suppliers. As a guide, look for LED lamps labelled 30 watts, but always check the lumen rating to be sure. Temperature is important when your pondweed first arrives in the lab as well. Many of the species we use are tropical, so plunging them into a tank of cold tap water will cold shock them. Tap water is fine to use, but allow the tank to come to at least room temperature or even slightly warmer before placing the pondweed into it. Also, make sure that the tank is aerated. The most important things when preparing for this practical are to find a reliable pondweed supplier that works for you in your particular location and at the time that you want to carry out the practical and that you plan your purchase or collection. This may mean buying pondweed online or in person at a local pet store, aquaria or garden centre or collecting it from a pond. Any of the species mentioned are at risk if sent through the post in the colder months. Sitting overnight in a cold depot can damage them so bear this in mind if you're ordering during a cold snap. The tropical weeds, particularly the red or yellow cabomba species, can break down after a week or so, even with a bright light and aerated water. So time your purchase carefully. 
When disposing of any plant material, always do so in household waste to minimise the risk of introducing non-native species in your local environment. With a healthy and actively photosynthesising pondweed, and by following our tips for caring for it and for the practical itself, the practical will be a success. You can find out more about the pondweed species we've mentioned on the SAPS website. The bobbling pondweed setup is versatile and can be used in different ways for different groups of students. It can be set up by simply filling a boiling tube with 1% sodium hydrogen carbonate solution and placing a piece of pondweed in it, cutting the stem under the level of the liquid. Cutting the stem at an angle under the surface of the liquid is important because it stops an airlock from forming, which would stop bubbles from being able to escape. As shown earlier, pondweed can also be placed in a beaker under an upturned funnel with a test tube over the top, so that the bubbles produced move up the neck of the funnel and displace the liquid in the test tube. You need to use a glass funnel for this setup because students will not be able to see the bubbles through a plastic funnel. These setups can then be placed at varying distances from a light source to investigate the effect of light intensity on the rate of photosynthesis. Younger students can simply count the bubbles produced in a set amount of time. Older students can collect the gas in a micro syringe or pipette and get a quantitative measure in this way. The visible difference in the gap between bubbles produced can also be used to show students that the rate of photosynthesis is changing quite rapidly in response to light level. Different coloured filter sleeves can be wrapped around the setup to allow students to investigate the effect of the wavelength of light on the rate of photosynthesis. From this, they can develop their own absorption spectra and further their understanding of which wavelengths of light are used most efficiently by the plant. By setting up some pondweed on a windowsill and collecting the gas for a few days, you can then show the students that the gas collected is oxygen rich by reigniting a glowing splint. There are a few things that can really make a difference to ensuring that this practical is successful for all the students in the class. Pondweed is a living organism which responds to its environment so it's important that the pondweed is kept in conditions that mean it's photosynthesising readily before as well as during the practical. Pondweed should be in a brightly lit, aerated tank at room temperature well before the practical starts. This means that it is already photosynthesising when it is removed from the tank and placed in the experimental setup. For all photosynthesis practicals, lighting is key. Here at SAPS, we recommend using light bulbs brighter than 1,200 lumens, which is equivalent to a 100 watt incandescent or filament bulb, for all photosynthesis practical work. There are a wide range of light bulbs available. If you're buying new ones, lumen rating is the best thing to look at on the box to make sure that a bulb is bright enough for photosynthesis. You can use any type of light bulb as long as it is bright enough. Tungsten filament or incandescent bulbs and halogen bulbs will need a heat sink between the pondweed and the lamp to reduce heating effects. CFL, energy saving, or LED bulbs won't need a heat sink. You can fit these bulbs to the ordinary desk lamps you already have in your lab. Bright light bulbs will ensure that students will be able to investigate the effect of light intensity effectively by moving their setup away from the light source. It's also worth considering temperature for the practical itself. Although it may be difficult to control the temperature in your individual lab, a warmer environment will mean warmer water, which means that photosynthesis will occur at a faster rate. If it's possible for the room to be warmer above 20 or even 22 degrees Celsius, this will help your pondweed produce a good stream of bubbles. Another rate limiting factor for photosynthesis the availability of dissolved carbon dioxide in the water can be eliminated by placing pondweed in a 1% sodium hydrogen carbonate solution that has also been allowed to come up to room temperature instead of just water.
So why does pondweed bubble? This is a classic photosynthesis practical, but it is somewhat counterintuitive. Often students learn about photosynthesis in a terrestrial plant where gas exchange happens via stomata into the air. And here we are looking at it in an upturned aquatic plant, which is releasing bubbles of gas from its stem. It can help to think about what is happening here in terms of the challenges that aquatic plants need to overcome, both in terms of the light available for photosynthesis and oxygen available for respiration. Light intensity is quickly reduced when light is travelling through water, so the deeper a plant is living, the less light is available to it. These weeds all root into the substrate at the bottom of a pond, river or lake, where light can be very limited. In addition, though there is carbon dioxide and oxygen dissolved in the water, the roots are in the substrate itself, where oxygen can be limited. A specialised tissue in the stem, called a renchema, helps solve these challenges. A renchema has large spaces in it that are filled with gas as the plant photosynthesises. This helps the pondweed to remain upright and be buoyant, so that it grows upwards towards the light, rather than lies on the bottom. Gases can also diffuse within the arenchyma through the plant. Oxygen produced during photosynthesis can then diffuse down through the arenchyma to cells in the roots of the plant, allowing them to carry out respiration. Gases can also move up through the arenchyma from the root cells. Arenchyma is what makes pondweeds a good plant in which to observe photosynthesis and investigate factors that affect its rate. When we cut the upturned stem of the pondweed, we're cutting open the arenchyma, which means that we can observe and collect the bubbles of gas, measuring the rate of photosynthesis. I hope that we have shown you here that you can make the bubbling pondweed practical a success. All of the species we recommended produce bubbles, and the bubbling rate will respond to changes in light intensity, showing your students that light intensity affects the rate of photosynthesis. Different species produce different bubble sizes, which means that this change may be more or less obvious, but all of them can be used successfully. For up-to-date guidance on this investigation and using pondweeds, go to the SAPS website.